Hello, everyone. Thank you for checking out this episode of Really Dicey. I'm here with... Francesco Nepitello, the, the designer for the One Ring role-playing game, the main designer, not the only one working on it. Excellent. And congratulations on the success of your your Kickstarter. So, yes, yeah, so someone that, that is now hearing about this for the first time, uh, let's talk about the, the what you can share with us about the technical aspects of the book. Uh, how big do you think the book will be and what, what chapters are you hoping to see in this book? The final details of that are yet to be completely finalized for, for two reasons, because one reason is that the, the game hasn't yet entered production. So uh, uh, company, Free League is finalizing all the uh, graphical elements, uh, illustrators are doing their job, and the graphic design uh, is being put together. And, and also, since we have uh, promo proposed some, some additional material in the Kickstarter, there's stuff that we go into each separate pro product for the game that uh, will need to be to be completed before we get into that. But in any case, in general terms, uh, what we are um, proposing through Kickstarter is a core rulebook for the game and a starter set, a boxed star starter set. So the core rulebook in the style of other games by, by Free League is not going to be a huge volume. It's going to be about uh, 200 and something uh, page, pages. Of course, that depends a lot on layout, depends on uh, how airy is layout, how, much, how many illustrations you have, so that depends. But I can tell you that mm, you mentioned that this is not the uh, first edition of the game, that's the second edition, compared to what was proposed as another, as an earlier version of the game, it's going to be slimmer than that. Um, not because it packs less content but because I spent quite a lot of time in the last few months in uh, trimming down uh, the language and unnecessary parts that needed that could profit from being clearer and more concise so um, it's simply packaged better than before uh, so it it, 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 it is contained in a, in a sort of a smaller package rather than a more expensive one. So that's that's it. It's going to be a full color book uh, or rather a rule book or a rule volume because you know there's a there's a, a shady uh, reason of licensing where we cannot really call any product that we do a book <laughs> because it's confusing for licensing reasons. Uh, so uh, the the main the, the core product will be uh, a core uh, a color a full color and and hardback and uh, as you've seen possibly from the Kickstarter it's going to have uh, a normal edition a standard edition and a limited one the limited edition is fancier with a with more uh, expensive materials and with a different cover. Uh, the starter set is going to be a box set containing three smaller booklets because it's uh, it has a rule book, um, a source book on the Shire, the, the home of the Hobbits, and a full uh, booklet containing adventures. And in addition to that, we have dice and we have a very big map that was unlocked during the Kickstarter showing uh, as we speak, the, the project has uh, the map of the Shire on one side that you have seen probably on the, on the Kickstarter page. There's a, an image of that. And on the other side, on the other side there's an Eridor map. But they might be split into different maps. I'm not sure about that. So there are a few other play aids in there, but it's a full complement of stuff that is aimed at if you want two different audiences, because the core is aimed at the um, experienced role player, or at least someone who, in some, uh, in in a way, wants to dive in with the full experience right away, where the starter set is an introductory set that, but but that in any case packs uh, an entire experience because it's full, fully playable and it's not simply something that you will play for a few sessions of play. There's quite enough room to play for, for, for a long while because there are a lot of adventures 
And also the starter set being uh, centered around the Hobbits is uh, packing a very distinctive experience compared to the, to the core that explores Middle Earth in a, with a wider perspective. Okay, so I'm gonna ask you kind of a, a two-prong question. Um, so for, for beginners, uh, how, can you, can you give a, a summary of the rules uh, and how different it is and or similar to other systems that that, that, that Free League may currently uh, uh, has out there, uh, as well as for for uh, experienced players that have played One Ring, what are the differences in the rules? Is there any big difference between a first and second edition? Well, uh, for uh, um, new players, the game is different from the other Free League games that most of them has. Uh, most of them use uh, a native system that was created by them using six-sided dice. Uh, in in some, uh, from the point of view of some design principles, the one ring is not that far, and that's probably why we were attracted uh, uh, to each other. I mean, the company and the game, and we got together to publish the game. Uh, but the yeah, the, the one ring uses a custom set of dice. Uh, that I like to to say that they're not custom dice from the point of view that they have like completely different things than numbers on them. Uh, they simply have a few elements on them that make them easier to read when you play. Because uh, the, the basically the, the 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 set of dice has two different types of dice. The fit die that is a twelve sided dice die, uh, numbered only from one to ten. And with the two remaining sides featuring uh, an eye of Sauron on one side and a Gandalf rune on the other. Uh, and then we have a set of six sided dice called Saxes dice that are the, the, the backbone of, of the game system because you roll more of them if you are, if you are more proficient. Uh, so the higher the, 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 your rating in a skill, or in an ability used in an action, the more dice you roll. Where you normally, where together with those, you you only roll one fit die. The fit die is the the uh, elementary um, brick uh, of the system because you you always roll it uh, regardless of the type of roll it is. If it is a skill roll, if it is an an, an attack roll, you always roll the fit die plus the number of dice representing your proficiency. Okay, so you can uh, you can roll the fit die by itself if you are really green in something, uh, and you, you can roll up to six success dice together with it if you're really proficient. So when you roll the dice all together, you look at the results you have and and add up the numbers on them, uh, aiming to match or beat a target number. Uh, the 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 thing that makes it a little less uh, of a calculation and easier to, to actually see if you succeeded or not is that you don't really need to uh, calculate precisely the sum of the dice. You just have to see if it is enough to beat the, the target number, to match or beat it. So if you roll, for example, three success dice plus a feed die, and you already see that the feed die came, out, came up with an eight, and the other dice at a glance tell you that you rolled over 14 and the target number was 14, you don't need to know exactly that you rolled, for example, a total sum of 21. You just want to know that, okay, I, 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 I match the target number or beat it and I'm fine. Uh, the uh, special icons that we have on the, on the dice tell you a few things more about the, the, the die result you got. Because on the success dice, so the, the six-sided dice, you have uh, a small icon on a six. It's an elvish numeral uh, that is used to determine how good your roll was. So if the roll, the total result of the roll was matching or was above the target number, and you rolled one or more of these icons, uh, that's a superior level of success. Of course, the more of those you roll, the better the result. And this is used throughout the game to, to evaluate, for example, how uh, badly you injure your enemies in combat. You can use those icons, you can spend them 
to to make different things like for, for example to help someone else who failed in an action or to uh, to simply decide and choose uh, an additional uh, positive detail of, of the action you just rolled. Last uh, but not least, the 12-sided die called the fit die has these two icons, an eye and a Gandalf room. The eye normally is simply equals zero. It's a bad thing, but it's not a disaster. So you, you, you just got a zero, so you better have higher numbers of the other dice to, to succeed. The Gandalf rune is an automatic success. So you beat the target number of the, 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 of the action, regardless of how high it is. Uh, so it gives you basically an 8.8% possibility of always succeeding at something. But of course, the real chance to do something is uh, to, to attempt an action with your best assets, so your best skills, where you're all more success dice. So I'm hoping that without showing you stuff, like without showing you the dice, that it was clear enough. But this is the main fundamental thing. You roll one fit die plus a number of success dice, look at what you get and, and uh, match it to, to a target number. The thing that, uh, coming back to your question, the thing that is new, for example, in the fundamental mechanics is that in the past edition of the game, the target number that you had to match or beat was decided by uh, the sort of traditional mechanic of levels of difficulty, okay? So a standard action was a target number of 14, but you could have different levels if the action was more difficult. Then we decided to, to basically get rid of that because we start from the, uh, we are really pushing from a different angle. If you're attempting something and you need a die roll, then the die roll is a difficult action. So if it, if the, the, the game master that in our game is called the lower master has some reasons not to consider the action difficult, then uh, they just uh, should tell you, you don't need to roll, you succeed, okay? So if you roll the dice, it is already difficult action. You don't need to make it too complicated further. So the target number does not depend on the whim of the Lord Master or on, on adjudicating the difficulty of the action, but depends on your character's main attributes. So all the abilities in the game are divided under one controlling attribute. And we have three of them based on uh, Gandalf, a phrase from Gandalf in the book that says to Frodo, uh, you will need all your strength, heart, and wits to succeed in your quest. So we have strength, heart, and wits. We have strength skills, heart skills, and wits skills. During character creation, you generate a target number for each one of them. So you have a strength uh, uh, target number, a uh, heart target number, and a wits target number. So for example, if you're using uh, you're trying to to to, to uh, follow someone without him uh, notice you. You will roll stealth, and 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 it's an ability that is under wits because it depends on your capability to be uh, wary and stuff like that. So the target number is based on wits, and 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 so on. So for example, if you're jumping, you you will use athletics, and athletics is a strength skill. So the target number is a strength. What we achieved with that. And you can, and it was easy to see this from a Twitch uh, game they played recently using second edition rules and was online. That the players, uh, the gameplay is much smoother because um, you have everything you need on your character sheet. You have your ability ratings, you have your target number. You don't need to wait for the game master to tell you anything. So if they tell you, make an athletics test. You just look, you see how many dice you have, you roll and you tell the Lord Master, I succeeded, or I made a great success because I had a superior level of success. I have everything I need to adjudicate the result of the action. So that's the main, the main, the, that's the basics and also probably the main difference between the first edition of the game and the second. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for that thorough explanation. Um, <laughs> so, so with, when, for the one ring, it, will it be similar to the first edition where it's a complete book, as in not like 
uh, like D&D, where it has like a player's handbook and a DMG and a monster manual. You'll find all of that in this one book. Am I correct? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, also, uh, the One Ring, also in its previous edition, uh, was um, a self-contained item from the point of view that contained everything from character creation and adversaries and uh, guidelines for for the game master and the setting uh, so everything is in there you just need that rule book to, to to be able to play the game and you don't really need anything else unless you want to uh, to 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 find out more about the, the gaming world like expanding the geographical focus of the game uh, but by the way uh, compared to first edition, uh, where the game was set mainly in Wilderland, that's the the, the region that is the, the focus of the Hobbit story, uh, where the the, the the forest of Mirkwood is and the Lonely Mountain and, and where the dragon Smog was. Uh, in uh, with this new edition, we moved the the, the attention to Eridor. Eridor is where the Shire is and is very much the the region that is considered a bit like the, the what everyone thinks when they think about middle earth because it's the beginning uh, of the lord of the Rings story and so where the seed of every story told in middle earth is first placed so that's the focus of the new core Oh, that, that's excellent. I, I was going to ask you um, because um, uh, something about that, because uh, I know some some of the comments I've been seeing from other players from from the first edition were concerned a little bit like, all right, it, would, the, would, would they concentrate on the same setting and areas uh, that the previous edition, you know, this uh, previous edition did, you know, um, is it going to move on from that? But hearing you say that they're going to focus more on the Shire uh, solves that, you know, answers that for itself. <laughs> um, but I, yeah, if you want the if you want the main the main adventuring focus is not really the, the Shire is the what was the ancient realm of Arnor. Um, if you know a bit about the history of Middle Earth, there was um, a, a great kingdom that uh, once was united and uh, at a certain point it was divided in two. So there was a northern kingdom and southern kingdom. And whoever read the books or in, or saw the movies know very well about the southern kingdom of Gondor, this, uh, where the the, real, the realm of Arnor uh, already fell under the the, 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 the the attack of the enemies of Sauron and its minions. And so now today, the today of our game, uh, only ruins are left, uh, and it's a desolate area. And so that's the, the backdrop of the game because we you are interpreting people that go outside of the uh, boundaries of their own uh, homes to to get you know to get on the road to adventure and go out and explore a dangerous uh, country that uh, had seen a gl glory days and today is is open for for people like the the, the adventurers to to find to recover something or. To, to find about the schemes and plots of the enemy. All right, excellent. Well, I, I know time is running short. Be before we wrap up, uh, one more quick question. Um, I know mm -hmm. about over the five or four, four or five days ago, you discussed about, uh, you know, you were excited that the Kickstarter is doing extremely well and already all the uh, stretch goals have been met already. Um, has yes. there been any more plans or anything like that for stretch goals? Anything new to be added? Well, right now, you know, the way Kickstarter works, um, projects have a very big and very fast uh, start, and then they normally hit a plateau, and, and they stay there for a while, and there, there might possibly be uh, another push at the end. Uh, for the moment, uh, you know, we're trying not to um, exceed our own capabilities and and to exceed um i mean we want to deliver the game uh, as soon as possible and and we promised uh, a november delivery but we will give the game to backers in pdf in a, in a beta form before that so in summer so we really want to do that i mean we might even go and give the the, the beta 
uh, version before that if it's ready. So we're really eager to get the game on the road. So we don't want to have to, to build ourselves any obstacles in, to that. Of course, uh, if if it's something that the, 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 the fans and the backers will ask us, uh, we will try to oblige. I mean, uh, right now we gave everything we think is reasonable to give uh, uh, from the point of view of additional material and stuff. They, I mean, all the uh, the pledges helped us to, to really flesh out uh, every item because we now have an additional D12, for example, in the set of dice because we have a new rule where favorite rolls allow you to to roll the feed die twice and keep the best result. And of course, if you have two feed dice, and you just roll them together and pick the best result. So that's that's it's a sort of a luxury addition to a game mechanic that would otherwise work anyway, but works better with an additional die. So we are giving an additional die to every set of dice. We have an alternate color set, uh, an, an, an alternate set of dice in a different color that we call Sauronic dice because they are black with, with with red uh, with red numbers, so we're super happy that we achieved all that. We un we didn't unlock all, all of it because we still have a few uh, a few stretch goals that are yet to be to be reached. Uh, but I mean, judging from the the, the 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 pace that we're keeping, we should we should get there. So if uh, if you will, if the backers will ask us for more. Uh, we'll probably really think hard <laughs> and try and try to add something. Okay, excellent. So again, this is going to come out for Free League Publishing. If people want to know more information, they could go there. Uh, and I'll put a link to the Kickstarter uh, in the description. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, talk to us. Is there anything I haven't asked? Anything you wanted to share before we wrap up? Oh, well, I would just really thank everyone who uh, who got on board with the project and, and of course, uh, everyone who's working with me, my co-designer Marco Maggi uh, and all the collaborators and the fans, because we, we're, we're keeping a very close eye to what the people is saying uh, on, the, on the news, on the different rules they hear about. We are getting feedback already. And, and of course, you know, the, the a designer's job is never done uh, because you would uh, tweak anything until the very last moment, until when everything is printed and ready to go. So, uh, so uh, up to the last moment, we have sometimes some misgivings, some doubts, maybe it could have been better this way or another way. Sometimes you trust your own instinct or you trust your uh your preference or you play tested it and then you got a result but again uh it's it's very cool to be able to interact with the fans through the, the kickstarter page and the forums of free league and other places like rpg net and 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 hear what what people say and, and yep we're we're keeping an eye on it so uh, if, if everyone if anyone has good ideas or opinions we're here to to, to listen to them <laughs> uh yeah i can add i can add that uh, people realize that we we are hearing them because there there's at least one stretch goal that was added exactly because people was asking for that type of thing and that's the, the additional detail okay all right excellent well again thank you sir for taking the time to talk to us and to our viewers out there be safe and um, be careful out there. Have a good day.